Story one. Am I the a-hole for yelling at my girlfriend to stop effing eating? My, 26 male, sister, 23 female, runs a bakery business and she's been struggling lately to keep up with orders because she's been short-staffed. She does a lot of orders for wedding cakes that require custard or marmalade fillings, and I offered to help her out by making these fillings at home and bringing them to her so she has less work to do. Unfortunately, the past four times I've made these fillings, my girlfriend, 24 female, has literally dipped her fingers into the filling jars and contaminated them because, in her words, she just wanted to try some. I've tried to explaining to her that she can't dip her fingers in and contaminate the entire batch because then I have to remake it. I said she should use a spoon and take some out if she wants to try so bad, but she just pouts and says that she likes using her fingers because it takes her back to her childhood. Today, I was trying to finish some chocolate custard to send it over to my sister really fast because she was running late on a wedding cake order for an important client. I told my girlfriend beforehand to not eat the custard and if she really wanted to, to please use a spoon. I get out of the shower and what do I see? She has her fingers in it again. I totally lost it because this is the fifth time she blatantly disregarded what I said and I yelled at her and told her to stop eating the food I'm making because it's not for her and she's contaminating it. She started crying and got mad at me for fat shaming her even though I made no comment on her weight and she has no history of weight issues or eating disorders. I know I was harsh, but she kept pushing my limits. Am I the a-hole? No, you are not the a Now granted, she might actually have some eating issues that she hasn't disclosed to you and maybe that is a sensitive subject to her and that might require some conversing and maybe you were a tiny bit harsh, but honestly, no, you kept telling her you can't do that, you're contaminating it, and it's for your sister's business, which I assume your girlfriend knows has been struggling and you're trying to help her out. And the fact that you asked her to please just use a spoon if you're going to taste this stuff, and she's like, no, I like using my finger like when I was a little kid. You're not a little kid, you're an adult, and you're literally doing something that you've been asked multiple times not to because it's like a health code issue. So, no, this person is not the a-hole. That girlfriend is being an a-hole. She's being inconsiderate and not taking into account... Like, she's not at all considering your feelings or just health in general. So, yeah, I'm not on her side at all. Story 2. Karen complains to HR about my body. I oh, reverse her complaint. Everyone hates her. I used to work in a call center where everyone had little cubicles. You could chat with people on either side or behind you if things got slow, but anyone on the other side of the divider was sort of hard to see or chat with. Only important because Karen was in this hard to see location from me. I have issues with overheating medical stuff. I like to sit right under the AC vent. Nobody fought me for this because I was a little too cold for most people. Well, being a woman, this meant that sometimes I had some nipple pokey issues on some days. It's perfectly natural, and to most people, not noticeable because it was under my shirt and bra. Karen notices this and makes a report to HR. The HR woman and my direct supervisor parade me through the cubicles and into their office to question me about my nipples. Now, I could have thrown a fit about this to begin with, since we didn't actually have a dress code and it's none of their damn business. They asked me to prove I was wearing a bra, so I showed them the strap. They told me, good enough, basically, and to go back to my desk. I refused to go back. I said I needed a place to complain about someone. They asked me who I was reporting, and I said, I don't know, but you do. I want to report whoever it was that's been staring at my breasts all day. Now that I know someone is staring, I feel like this is a hostile work environment. They acted like I was joking at first until I said, if you don't have a talk with them, I will go over your heads and report you for forcing me to reveal my bra to you. I got escorted back to my desk, and Karen was sitting there looking smug, until they escorted her to the HR office instead. I don't know what happened to her in the office, and I didn't care they did their part by having their talk with her. All I really wanted was to know who did it. Since it was a very slow day, all my coworkers started asking me what that was all about. Office gossip, you know. I told everyone exactly what had happened and added that Karen must have been fascinated with my breasts since she noticed. Everyone else confirmed they didn't even notice. When she came back from HR, every person in the room knew what she had done and was glaring at her. Snitches didn't get stitches and didn't get fired either, but 
They got treated like the Karen they were. Nobody would talk to her. People would be chatting, see her, come try to join the conversation, and go silent and turn away from her. Some people made loud whispers and made comments like, Don't say anything. She will report you. She quit about two weeks later. Edit. Wow, this is the most notifications I've ever logged into. Thank you for the awards and replies. For those saying I should sue, this is about seven years ago. The company no longer exists. I didn't sue them back then because the company was pretty new, and they were new to their position just like the rest of us and in their 20s. They seemed like they were not trained on how to handle this, awkward and confused. I didn't want to ruin their lives over it. I don't think they'd ever do it again. For those saying she was jealous, I have no idea what she could have been jealous of. I was almost 40, gaining weight fast from my disability, and I'd say 4 out of 10. All I can think is maybe she was jealous I was giggling with coworkers while trying to quietly play cards against humanity. Just, why, why do people have to comment on other people's, like, dress and bodies in that kind of way? Who cares if she wasn't wearing a bra and her nipples were poking through? They're just nipples! The vast, vast majority of us have them! It's not a big deal. I got some nippies right under here. Ooh. Who cares if I was cold? There's probably been some times in this office where I've been kind of cold and maybe they came through in a video. Are you guys going to complain to YouTube HR and have me marched on down to the office? Good luck. They're not speaking with me. They're not taking my calls anymore. I don't know where I'm going with this. Next story. Story three. My mother threw my sister a party for my eighth birthday. This happened in 1998 when I was eight years old and my sister was five. From a very early age, I knew that my younger sister was the golden child and could do no wrong in our mother's eyes. Mother Dearest was abusive towards me for most of my childhood until I was 14 and her physical and mental abuse turned towards my sister as well. My parents had separated before my sister was born. They didn't mesh well together but tolerated each other for the sake of their kids. Part of the reason that my sister was mom's favorite child was her love for horse riding, which I was never interested in. The more hostile our mother got towards me, the less interested I got in anything she was interested in. And then came my eighth birthday. I was friends with our next door neighbor's kids and a few kids from school. Although I didn't have that many, I loved my friends I did have and was excited to share my birthday with them. My birthday was on a Friday, but Mom told me that she'd arrange my birthday party for Saturday, which was fine by me. The day of my birthday party came, and I got excited. At that age, I hadn't yet had my heart crushed by my mother and her blatant favoritism and abuse, but that was the year I began to hate my birthday. The party was arranged to start at 12 p.m., so I wore my favorite dress and sat outside to wait for my friends to arrive. This was the point that I realized that something wasn't right. Outside was the one mother of one of my sister's friends with a Shetland pony in tow. My mother knew I wasn't interested in horses, and even if I was, this horse was too small for an eight-year-old. As more guests started to arrive, my heart broke more and more. These were my sister's friends, not mine. And for the icing on the cake, out came my five-year-old sister in a Cinderella costume. None of these people were there for me. This was, this was supposed to be my party, but instead it became a party for my sister. None of my friends were there. All of the birthday presents were addressed to me, but there were things I didn't want. My little pony toys and other horse-related gifts were what I got for my mother and the people at the party. The only present I got that wasn't horse-related was from our dad. He came later in the day to wish me a happy birthday, and by that point, the other guests and the pony were gone. I can remember him asking me what was wrong, and I wouldn't come out of my room or talk to anyone. My mother acted dumb and said that she didn't know why I was upset. It wasn't until many years later that my dad found out what had happened. After that day, I didn't want a birthday party again. Even now at 30, I don't make a big deal out of my birthday. I still celebrate it, but I don't do birthday parties. My sister has changed a lot since then, and I don't hold any grudges for the things our mother did. We don't speak to our mother anymore, and our father died in 2009 when I was 19. It's tough sometimes, but me and my sister are really close, so we have each other to lean on for support. I'd be lost if it wasn't for her. I'm glad to hear that this at least didn't color your impressions and relationship with your younger sister, because clearly this is something that is 100% on your mom. And I know when you've got younger siblings, sometimes they get jealous when things are happening for the older siblings, and it's like, oh... I know it's your birthday, but can they blow the candles on the cake? Or I bought a present for them, like something to kind of placate them. But you don't expect 
your birthday to be just totally given up to them, that's not great. Like, A, for the sibling whose birthday it is, that's gonna make them miserable, and that's just cruel to them. But also, that's like, uh, that's like, uh, giving so much to the younger child that they're gonna become spoiled and entitled. Like, it's ruining two kids in two very different ways. It's double bad parenting. Congrats, mom. Not great. Story 4. My neighbor wouldn't stop smoking on the balcony. I bought a super soaker. It swept into my apartment at all hours of the night. There was a designated smoking area, but that was inconvenient for them. I bought a massive water gun and waited one night until it was good and dark outside. When the smoke began, I stepped silently out into the night and sprayed all of the ice-cold water as hard as I could into their direction. I heard them yelp in shock as I quickly retreated back into my apartment. My heart was racing and I had a huge thrill. I felt scared, but satisfied. They had no way of knowing it was me, but they did know I often complained about them. The next day I acted like nothing had happened and said hi to them cheerfully. They began to accuse me. I acted shocked and appalled until they admitted they didn't know for sure what had happened. I said things like, are you sure it wasn't raining? Maybe another neighbor smelled smoke and thought there was a fire. Then I went back home and laughed my butt off in glee. <sighs> Yeah, I really can't blame you. I know that they're out on their balcony, so it's like, well, it's technically outside and it'll get blown away, but smoke really can just, like, in certain areas with the wind, just get blown back in. And especially if it's going to get blown back into your neighbor's house and stuff like that, I don't care how inconvenient the smoking area is. Don't be rude to your neighbors. You know, don't have smoke blown in on them. A lot of people really don't like that crap, you know? Just... Be considerate. Just a little bit of consideration. Just a just a pinch of consideration makes the recipe of neighborly friendship. I don't know where I was going with that. I guess consider being considerate's like salt. But don't don't be salty. End of video. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.